Today's episode is brought to you by Gray Block Pizza. Gray Block, 1811 Pico Boulevard on the way to, to, to the beach in Los Angeles. Gray Block Pizza, get that here. Today's episode is brought to you by BetterHelp.com. Do you need help? Damn right you do. BetterHelp.com is a place where you can get mental, uh, mental well, you can get mentally well over your phone or tablet. It's a great place to start therapy. If you never thought about therapy, if maybe you talk to somebody or you you um you might use a Ouija board or do a uh, some people do a crystal ball and then just wait to see if anything happens. But if you're tired of those old school methods, then you can try betterhelp.com. It's professional and affordable counseling. I go to counselors. You know, I I, I need help. Uh, I, I'm the first one, dude. Somebody offering help. Boy, I wish I had four hands because I put them all in the air over here. Help over here. Uh, BetterHelp.com has four communication modes. You can text, chat, phone, and video with an actual therapist that can really help you. I've tried out BetterHelp, and I enjoy it. BetterHelp can let you start communicating with a therapist in less than 24 hours. It's available worldwide. Sign up at BetterHelp.com slash Theo today. That's BetterHelp.com slash Theo. How we doing, you snazzy little princesses and petunias, huh? You ready to test drive your own heartbeat? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Huh? You ready to smile like a, like a walrus on Molly? The ocean is open, baby. Get in there! That's that tiny sand who hitting us with a little back in black. That's back in black by tiny sand who. And, you know, tiny sand who is a. Well, what is it? Tiny sand who is a is it it's a man or something or it's a it's a being it's a creature I don't know what it is but it it has an email and once in a blue moon it sends an email with a music with a music attached to it and it just says hey here's that hitter and that's tiny sand who and he's been doing that since we started this podcast and he might be <clears throat> I don't know what tiny sand who could be it could be a, like a, a you know a, a man it could be somebody that lives in the. If I think about it, it seems like a, uh, you know, maybe a little like a little baby otter, like a baby otter that sometimes you know has been underwater just making music, and just just nibbling on the uh, you know nibbling on the hard parts of his own tongue and just just feeling the fucking lavender, just the lavender just run through his own bloodstream. And that's Tiny Sand too. And, and and I feel like that otter every now and then it comes to the top of the water and it just spits out into the air a musical sound that fills us up. And that's Tiny Sand who. And he does that for us. And that is Back in Black. That's his own cover written just uh, for you and for me. Uh, thank you guys for being here with me today. It is, uh, it's a good day. It has to be. It has to be because it's the only one we have right now. You know, I mean, you could wait till tomorrow, but if you want, today can probably be good. 
So just if today's starting off for you in a shitty bro, give it another chance. Give give today another chance. Maybe y'all got off on a bad foot. You think about that because you know that today only ha- is a one legged deal. You know, and today only ha- it has one foot. So that foot can sometimes be good and sometimes be bad. So if that's the case, just give it a chance. Give it a chance. Let it take another step into your life and see if that next step is uh, is on the good, it lands as a good foot. You know, because we have, because, you know, sometimes it's like, oh, I'm having a bad day. Well, then reintroduce yourself to the day. Reacquaint yourself. Let the day re, you guys reconsider each other instead of sitting there all day like, today sucks, you know? Today sucks. Well, I can, you know, we was out of Philadelphia cream cheese and I can't even, you know, we didn't have no, uh, uh you know, caramel topping last night for the vanilla ice cream scoops. <laughs> Today sucks. No. Today didn't start off well. Today is a one-legged deal, and it started off on that, you know, it landed with that bad imprint into your into your sandbox. So y'all started off on a bad foot. Well, let today jump again into your life. Make an agreement with today. If it's not going well, say, hey, hey, today, I'm Theo, and I want to see if maybe we could do this differently. And let the day reintroduce itself. And and, and you guys give each other another chance. You got to give things second chances sometimes. It's hard. People give you second chances. And sometimes you got to give other people second chances. Good to be here. Thank you guys for joining me. I, uh, man, I got back from Charlotte. I had a blast in Charlotte. Um... We had, oh, man, so many people came out. I want to apologize for the late show on Saturday. They had some uh, people in the, uh, they had some people, I think, that was on uppers. You know, they was probably on, I don't know what the heck they were on. Uh, You know, repeated doses of liquor, maybe gunpowder, you know, uh, harsh, harsh cinnamon. One of them could have been on. Maybe somebody, maybe they had some apple pie and it was just so tart that they just showed up and were just complete assholes at the show but finally they toss those clowns out but um but you know i I just say that because i know a lot of people i'm not saying that to demean those guys they threw some guys out but what that what's not what makes me upset is i know that so many other people come out to the show they get a babysitter they drive you know we had people drive three four seven hours to get to the to charlotte this weekend and I was so excited. And then you get some, some clowns that come out, and they're just selfish. They think it's all about them, and they're just ruining the evening because they don't know how to be adults. And it just, uh, and it hurts me because it, 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 it makes it so I'm unable to, you know, drop that hitter out there. I'm, able, I'm unable to, you know, do that, just skeet that word. Out into the out into the crowd and, and create a good uh, a good spider's web of joy. But I'm happy to be back. Uh, a friend of mine gave me a pin. Somebody uh, came to the show and gave me a pin. One of the curious crew that comes out to see uh, my shows, and um, the pin was in memory of his friend Alex that had passed away. And so I just wanted to say thank you for that, and we'll keep it here in studio. Another thing we got in the studio, I got an autographed uh, baseball. I got an autographed baseball and a baseball. I mean, I know you've seen it before. It's like a little white ball. It looks like a big, it looks like a big kind of nut or something off of a goat. If they had a big, big goat that had hard, hard nuts, uh, that's what a baseball looks like. And um, and it's autographed by Noah Syndergaard from uh, the New York Mets. And I saw my first game ever was a Mets game years and years ago. And uh, and um, 
and I'm a fan of Noah, and he and he's a supporter of mine. And so he gave me this autograph ball, and a friend of mine copped that for me, and um, and saw him at an autograph session the other day. And he wasn't signing any any balls, but he signed one for us here at this past weekend. And so uh, we're very appreciative of that. And it's nice we're gonna have it in the studio. We're getting some of the studio kind of put together in a new atmosphere. Um, nothing crazy, but but uh, but it's gonna be new. What's going on, Charlotte? I had a good time. I had a good time. You know, I went out there, went over to Mertz. They got Mertz, and they got soul food at Mertz. And I don't know if you ever had soul food. But they call it that because when you put it in your body, your fucking soul shows up to meet it. I mean, soul food is just... Dude, you might not even think you have a spirit, and you put a... Ta- I mean, this... These yams were so candied, bro. They were, they were LGBTQ. Um, you know, they were don't ask, don't tell yams. These things were sweet. I mean, I had yams. They had a, I had a catfish fillet. Man, you could taste the lake. You could taste. I mean, it's it tasted like I was eating a stack of beautiful postcards. You you could taste the people camping in the distance and. Making coffee in the morning, you could taste the, uh, you know, a family picnic, and by the edge of the stream, that's how damn good this catfish was. You could taste the mem, the memories that were inside of this catfish's head, in its brain, in its soul. And that's how good that catfish was. That catfish fillet, boy, I put it in my mouth, and that mother, I swam right down my gullet, <sighs> and that's soul food. Food that meets your soul. Food that when it goes in your body, your soul sh- your soul says, oh, well, what is this? This was made with love and care and affection. This wasn't made by some, you know, you got to beat it out of a box. And they got a prize at the bottom of it or something. You know, back in the day, they used to have, you know, cereal or macaronis. And in the end of the, at the bottom of the box, they'd have a little trinket in there. You know, a little, you know, a rape whistle or something like a little, uh, you know, one time it had a, it was a, um, it was a piece of, uh, like a, a peppermint stick and it was just loose in the box. Fuck, I actually, that might've just been somebody just spit a damn mint into the cereal, but you know, they had a different thing when I was young, they had a little item in there. And you'd reach your hand. Dude, I remember when the cereal, when you got that cereal, the Frosted Flake. When you get the Frosted Flake and they got, they used to have a a toy in the bottom. They would put a toy in the bottom, a little, you know, a little, you know, a a rape whistle or a little, uh, you know, a picture of a monkey kind of holding its nuts or a little statue of, um, you know, Benedict Arnold, Arnold. And they'd put it in the bottom, and you had to slide your hand. You had to, you had. To, I mean, you had to have precision and get your hand right down the side of that box, all the way to the bottom. And then you had to make a perfect right, a uh, ninety degree turn with your hand and feel up under the side of the cereal. Take you nine minutes, bro. If somebody came up and you had, you couldn't get your arm out fast. This was a slow vibe because you couldn't spill the cereal out of the bag. It might, you do no, but you ain't spilling cereal where I'm from. Because if a flake hits the air, somebody's tongue is going to catch, is going to meet it halfway to the ground. And you get that and you reach your hand out under there and you, and you get that prize and you would pull it out. And it would be a tattoo or something. It's, you know, some, it says give blood on it or it would be a, a, a neck tattoo or something. You could lick it and put it on your neck. Says, you know, something, save these hoes or, you know, uh, something fun, you know, or like a little locket around. It would have like a little locket with a picture of like an old man or something in it that you didn't know. And you could wear that. But they had different prizes in the cereal box. And man, it was, I mean, it was fun to have back in the day. That's one thing I really, really miss. You know, I miss a lot of back in the day, man. I, I miss being young. I miss... uh you know, I'm still happy that I'm alive, though. You know, that's the thing. It's like I'm happy to be able to have memories. You know, memories are pretty are pretty cool, aren't they? 
aren't they pretty cool, do you think? Memories are pretty cool because, you know, a memory, it's like your brain is saying, oh, you know what, bro? I'm going to hold on to this for us, daddy. And that's pretty cool, you know? Because, that, that you know, it's nice to know that your brain, that there's something inside of you that's working for you sometimes. Because oftentimes our brains can work uh, against us, you know, or not have some of our best interests at hand. And that's the, and that is the, the definition of the dark arts right there. You know, we've talked about it over the years, and that's the definition of the dark arts, is when your brain is making choices and you're doing things, you're doing activities where you don't have your best interests at hand. Oh, what else, man? Oh, I got some dates for you, some surprise dates. I am coming to Addison Improv, Addison, Texas, one night only, December 6th. December 7th and 8th, I'll be at Comedy Off-Broadway in Lexington, Kentucky. Uh, one of my good friends from growing up, my buddy Chad lives there, and I'm excited to get to see him. And um, he just moved there this year, and and uh, I feel like that's a blessing because I didn't know when I was going get to get to see him, and then this comes through the email and said, that's where I'm going. You know, you don't know what's going to come your way. You don't know what's going to, you know, show up in your world that is gonna, that's going to make your soul light up. You don't know. You don't know. And that's why if the day starts off bad, if the week is, then you got to reintroduce yourself. Because if you sit around waiting for the week to, you know, oh, well, this month, this friggin' week, it don't care about me. It doesn't, you know, I got gum in my hair. Oh, well, then that, then there you go. But if you reintroduce yourself and get you and meet it halfway, you know, if you make yourself available for, for, for change, for a new opportunity in this week, it's Tuesday, Monday and Tuesday, we're a little rocky, whatever, Wednesday, let's start, let's, let's reignite this, you know? Let me show, let's treat each other differently. Ask that of the week, ask that of the world. You know, if Mother Nature's just giving you, uh, you know, that, um, she just giving you the dry milk suds or, you know, the dry milk flakes. And you got to mi- ask her on Wednesday, say, hey, boo, let me catch a hit off that tit. I need that fresh hitter. Because, you know, Monday and Tuesday, you've been giving me this half, with the, you know, this, you know, mix the milk up in the cup, this confectioner's dust or whatever. This uh, leche con uh, cocaina, you know. You give me this milk dust. I got to bring my own water. We're not make, you know, on Wednesday, if you need more, ask for more out of the world. Reintroduce yourself. Say, hey, we started off rocky. I noticed you was giving me the bad, you know, that leche powder. How about uh, putting that tit in daddy's mouth for a day or two? Let's reintroduce ourselves to one another. You know, you make the milk and I'll do the lip work. We just got to sometimes reintroduce ourselves because I get like that, you know, and I say this, I'm not preaching. I'm just reminding myself that, you know, if things get rough to, to just recalibrate, you know, cause you don't know, man, you just don't know because if you're in a good mood, then you should, then the world can meet, then, then, then good things can happen to you. You know what, I realize in, in being alive, nothing great ever happened to me when I was at the rock bottom, you know, when I was in total negativity. But when I'm in the middle, man, something really great can happen. So just get yourself to the middle. If you're struggling, even get yourself to the middle. Just get yourself to the middle and see what shows up. See what lights your soul up. Because something will, man. There's, there, you know, your soul wants to be alive. And there's good out there and things want to happen. And things that are good want to happen to you. They're waiting for you. They, they milling around in the distance. You know what I'm saying? If you, if you could see, man, if you had ultra, you know, supervision circle, you know, knowledge, power, visuals, then you would see in the distance. Maybe they got that, you know, 
that $5,000 lottery ticket hanging out in the distance smoking a cigarette. Or maybe they got, uh, you know, that home loan mortgage. You want to get the deal and they want the deal and this. Maybe that thing's sitting on the curb with a dip in its mouth waiting for you. You know, you want to meet the love of your life. Maybe that match is, or, or, or that male match is in the distance, in a tent. And they in there hot boxing that tent, smoking, you know, that chief chief, that puff out, that dope dope, that greeny green, that leafy leaf, bruh, that brain kale, bruh, dope, marijuanas. And they're just waiting for you to get into a middle ground. They, they, they can't come into your world because you got too much negativity. Well, just lighten up. Lighten your load. Lighten your load. And let your soul show up. Because there's a lot of soul food out there for you. I got some in Charlotte, man. So many nice people came out. I can't. Look, we had people come out. A man, Justin, came out, brought me a card. Him and his wife, it was, I think, their set. He was, uh, you know, um, he and his wife was their anniversary. It was his birthday. He brought me a birthday card. Um, a, a gentleman brought me some coffee, some nice coffee from New Orleans. A uh, nice home gift. Uh, it, it, was, it was just beautiful. A lot of beautiful people came out. And uh, I'm just super grateful. I can't even tell you. Oh, so we went and did the single mom. We did a single mom. Two single moms. Uh, my girls, Heather and Erica. And these ladies was legitimate. Okay. If you want um, if you want fresh breath, why don't you have a couple of these legitimates? Because your breath been smelling like you ain't about nothing. Like you ain't getting your work done. Well, guess what? What you need is legitimates. Put a couple of these batches in your mouth. And next thing you know, things you're saying making sense. You're showing up with uh, value flying out of your face. Wouldn't that be a funny commercial? Legitimates. Tired of talking shit? Get some legitimates. Man, I'm in a weird mood today. I think, honestly, I'm delirious. I think I am damn Eddie Murphy in right now. So the single mom that came out was Heather, and she brought her friend Erica, and we went bowling. And I'm not going to say that uh, they won, but they did. And uh, my feature came out, uh, this guy, Ari Manis. And a lot of you guys rem remember Ari. He came into the podcast early for this past weekend, like a year ago. And um, helped produce some episodes and came on as a kind of a sidekick for, uh, I think, three episodes. And a lot of listeners gave him a hard time. But, um, and so we didn't have him on anymore. But he, uh, he came out and, and we just went and had a good time, man. We had fun. And both of those ladies, they have, one of them has two daughters and one of them has one daughter. I think 13, like nine or, and 22, I believe, are their children's age. And it was nice, man. They were beautiful girls. I mean, Heather, uh, you know, they were cool because they showed up all night. I mean, they showed up looking like they were, you know, really fresh looking. You know, like a couple of little boosy had kind of plucked them out of a, you know, out of a grape patch or something, a couple of beautiful grapes. And they showed up. And then next thing you know, we had them take their shoes off. And we're playing, we're bowling and everybody. It was just a good sport. And we laughed. We had a good time. And, uh, and I'm so grateful to the Patreon supporters and everything to make that kind of experience possible. And you could tell that they, uh, they were, they lo just love being moms. And they, you know, Heather, you know, she had a very, uh, beautiful she has like a very they're both beautiful young ladies and they had a very um heather has a, you know a lot of really great motherly instincts and and she was our mother and her friend was erica and erica is kind of the one that always gets them into trouble apparently they're like tom and jerry kind of and and they're all and and we had fun man and heather you can just tell that she just has a you know, God just put like a, re, you know, some real special gifts in her and she's, you know, she's a mom. And so it was just nice. It was nice to take her out and it was nice for her to come and join us. And Erica, she's just like a DJ, you know, she just, 
she just, she's like, if you have chili, she's the spice, you know? She's that banana pepper, you feel me? She's spicing things up. But we, uh, but they were both beautiful ladies, and we had a lot of fun. And so, thank you to Patreon for making that happen. Um, and we'll put a little bit of that date out in the next, uh, the Single Moms Night Out. We'll put that out in the next week or two. We also did a hidden camera game show in the hotel room. Um, they had a, a cleaning lady that works at the hotel, and I didn't think it was going to happen. It, it, you know, the day it started off strange on on uh, on Saturday. I had a long night Friday night of the shows and people coming out and then one guy was high on cocaine and wouldn't stop talking to me at the end of the show and had I mean look if you're gonna do cocaine here's what I'm saying and you this is coming from a former man that DC did cocaine brush your teeth okay throw a couple legitimates in your mouth because some of y'all be getting all coked up and dried out. And your mouth smell like you've been hiding little doo-doos behind your, uh, behind your molars. Like they got little doo-doo crouchers trying to pop out behind your tongue and stuff. Brush your teeth. If you're going to do cocaine, get a little travel size um, toothpaste. And one of those little half toothbrushes they give you at a Hampton Inn. Go to the front desk of a Hampton Inn. Take your fucking, take your bad breath down at the front desk. Hit the bell. Wait for the night manager to come up. Okay? Oh, hey, night manager, Daniel, whatever your name is. I'm on cocaine. My breath stinks. They'll give you one of those little bitty toothbrushes. It's a halfway hitter. Then keep it in your pocket if you're going to do cocaine. Just because you're having fun partying, you know, just because you running around with a snout full of, of, of the devil's up, up, doesn't mean everybody else got to be uh, playing hide and go smell with your dookie breath. Think about doo doo. Think about your breath. Now think about them together. That's what you're doing. So take proper care of yourself if you're going to do cocaine. Gang, gang. Sorry. You don't have to go off on those on those little tangents. Um, but man, I had such a great time. I had a great time. I know I come back to that kind of as my default, but it was just special, man. People came out. And man, I'll tell you this. I had some of my best shows this weekend that I've had. And I think a lot of it is just the joy that's in the room, man. People are excited. Get in there. Yeah, man. And it's just nice, man. People, you know. You know, people giving hugs and just feeling good and the excitement in the air. And to know that the people that are watching the podcast, that some of the money's going towards taking out single moms. You know, we, uh, the the hotel, the cleaning lady, man, we, we helped her cop an extra $140. You know, man, and she was feeling great. And it was just, you know, it's not a bunch, but it's a little. You know, and then I felt great after hanging out with the single moms because it made me think about... You know, my mom, you know, I, and I've said it before, my mom, no, you know, a lot of people didn't take my mom out when I was growing up. Um, you know, and that always kind of made, you know, and I didn't realize it, realize it as a kid, but it means something when you go over there to pick a woman up, if she has a kid, that you behave accordingly. You know, because the kid is seeing that. And my mother always had to work, and I wish that somebody would have taken her out sometimes. And I'm not saying that these women are like that, that Heather and Erica were like that, but it's just nice. We, you know, it's nice to be a part of it because then it makes me feel good. It makes me feel like if there's a hole inside of me, you know, that still carries this emptiness around that, you know, that I didn't see a man take care of my mother or do something nice for her, that I can help fill that own hole in myself by being a part of a fun night with with uh with some ladies that I don't know that have children. You know, knowing that their kid is at home but their kid is having fun because somebody's just out doing something fun with their mom and it's all on the up and up. And I'm also sick of the world out there and the media and the news making it seem like every man is bad or we're dirty. It's the wor- it's the last thing in the world. I'm so sick of this People who get off on just ruining, making it seem like all men are evil or ruining 
or, or ruining the world. Are you out of your mind? Men have ruined America or this. Uh, shut it down. Okay? All men and women are. We're just, we're, pawn, we're, we're, we're chess pieces of Mother Nature. Mother Nature's the one moving us around. You know, we've done the best we could over time. You know, I'm just sick of that. A lot of, there's been a, I believe that more people, way more people are good than bad. And there's a lot of great people out there. And a lot of them are men. And a lot of them are women. And I'm not going to sit around and just let that be okay. That every man just gets chastised for being a man. It ain't fuck. you think it's super easy being a man? Okay, it ain't easy. So just shut that down. But anyway, I'm going to get out of the negativity. Uh, a couple of updates. The King and the Sting podcast is currently on hold. We're going to make it happen. Brennan Schaub has some stuff. He's, um, he has some other work opportunities, and I'm happy for him. You know, I'm so grateful to him and Brian Callen uh, and their Fighter and the Kid podcast, and they've helped me, you know, get into podcasting and just been so supportive. Uh, I'm really, really grateful to them. We are still making it. It's still going to roll out. It's just going to roll out a little bit slower. But I, I, I want to thank the artist submissions that have come in, and we're super grateful. We're super grateful, man, and it's still going to happen. Um, we have Sebastian Maniscalco in studio this week. So I'm so excited that that's going to be on. If you haven't seen this man, he just, he, I mean, he did four shows at Madison Square Gardens. Okay, and that's the biggest garden next to what else? Garden of Eden, Mr. McGregor's Garden, and uh, Sound Garden. So, unbelievable. Khabib versus Connor, that was the jam. That was the jam. Man, I think it was everything it was cracked up to be. And it, look at the end, bro. It got Russian. It got Russian. People jumping into the um, into the octagon. People jumping out of the octagon. Here's the thing: it's like you want diversity in America. You want to welcome other cultures. Well, shit got Russian. So well, you can't just welcome the parts of other cultures you want. You're like, well, be you know. These nutcases are like, you have to be accepting of every single thing, of every, okay. Well, then don't complain when shit gets Russian. People jumping in and out. People karate kicking, doing tiger attacks. That's what happened. And I think the UFC, man, is quickly headed towards tag matches. Could you imagine tag team? Could you imagine? Also, if you don't follow Derek Lewis on Instagram, I think it's like the Beast UFC or something. Uh, that guy is one of America's new favorite human beings. He tells it like it is. And, uh, and I just really enjoyed that. Um, what else? What else we got? That's what we got. But yeah, I loved being in... Um, I loved being in Charlotte. I loved being in North Carolina. A lot of people, Mecklenburg County representing, came out. People came in from Raleigh again that had already seen me eight weeks ago and they came back. You know, people driving in South Carolina. I had couples text me and email me. It was their first comedy show that they'd ever even seen. You know, I got an email just a few minutes ago. I'll read it to you right now. Hey there, just wanted to let you know for some random... Random reason you read this email amongst the thousands of emails you get. I wanted you to know that ever since my husband passed away, he was in the military several months ago, you have kept me laughing and put a smile on my face. Basically, I just want to say thank you for being you, and please don't stop making people laugh. Lots of love, Jessica. That just came in uh, this evening. But, um, but man, I just felt the love, and, and it keeps me excited. You know, I think as we're going to do some big things as a group, and we're just getting started. Uh, but I had a blast this weekend. So thanks for making people that came out in Charlotte. Thanks for making me a part of your life. Cause it, uh, it means a lot, man. And I, and I, and I thought about being at home. I miss being a kid. I think with Halloween coming up, I think about that a lot. You know, I was thinking one time me and my brother, we had all our candy, bro. And them, them sacks was full, you know what I mean? And when your sack gets full, the candy sack, the items that are in it, some of them become dangers. And I'm talking about suckers. 
Because a sucker, to me, it's a fucking bank. It's a bank candy. A sucker is, if you, if you don't know what a sucker is, it's like a piece of sweetener at the end of a little white stick. And you suck on it. And when you're done, you just have the stick in your mouth. It's kind of, I mean, honestly, it's a little perverse. But if you're into that kind of stuff, then you're into that kind of stuff. And if you, if you see a boy that eats too many suckers and then the sticks get bigger and bigger and bigger, then next thing you know, your boy's in a, you know, he might be into some wild stuff. He might be into homoeroticism. So you never know. It's kind of a gateway. It's kind of, you know, you know the suckers at the bank can be a gateway drug to uh, homosexuality, and which is fine. So what I'm saying is this, a sucker though, those sucker sticks late at night in a, in, in a Halloween candy sack can poke through the bag. And that's dangerous because you risk losing all your candy. And I remember one night, me and my brother at the end of the night, we were furious. You know, we were, one of us was raggedy and because my dad screwed up and got the wrong costume freaking unbelievable one of us was, was raggedy ann and one of us basically my brother he had glued a bunch of fucking laundry to his shirt i don't know what he was dude an idiot so but we're out there we had our sacks of candy and we are at, you know at the end of the night you're sweaty you're angry that this was one time my mom had, had to work and my dad had had, had, had to take us trick-or-treating and we got lost bruh and we ended up in kind of like a sketchy neighborhood, and we almost got fucked up a couple times. Some of the kids over there didn't even know it was Halloween, bro. So they don't know what we're talking about. Trick or treat. They thought one person it was a um, it was a black person's house, honestly. And they, I guess they had a dude there. His name was Trick or Treat. We're like Trick or Treat, and they're like, "Hold on, let me get him." And then this dude showed up, man, and he seemed like a nice guy. But anyway, uh, but that was a, you know, it was back in the day. But um, but I just missed it, man. You know, and my brother and I would fight with those candy sacks. Bam, bam, bam. You get violent at the end of the night. And then when your candy sack broke, it was nighttime. So now you're feeling all on the street in the dark trying to know what's a candy and what's a little stick or a leaf. You know, or a dirty, um, sometimes they have dirty barrettes out in the yard and out in the street. And you don't know. You're trying to shovel all this shit back in your sack. And you don't know what's candy and what's a, you know, a little chunk of sweetener or a little sugar chunk. Or what's just anything. What's a damn, you know, a little mouse skull. Sometimes they might have a mouse that died and his skull is still out there. You know, just just looking around in, in, the, in, the, in the world. And you put all that shit, because you're in a hurry now. You got to get home. My dad's yelling. You know, Mr. Trick or Treat's trying to sell us a fucking lawnmower or something. And we got, well, you know, we got limited time. We got to get home. So you shoveling all the shit. You've been fighting that sucker ripped through your candy sack, that sucker stick. And now you got to get home. So you shovel anything you can off the ground real fast. A bunch of rocks and shit. You get home, you got like eight pieces of candy. You got a, um, you know, you got one of those little, uh, you got maybe like a lighter, you know, you got a, um, somebody may, you know, you might have like a dirty Christmas ornament because somebody was riding down the street one time with their ornaments in a car and they got in a domestic dispute and fucking threw them all out. And you got one of those, you got a bunch of rocks, you got some gum, but it's not new gum. It's like old gum that somebody had just spit out their window or something. And it's, you know, it's hard now. But you also, so you you just get home with who knows what. <sighs> Those were the times. We had some crazy people in our neighborhood, man. Dude, I remember this one kid growing up. This boy named Morgan, bro. It's something. People call him Damp Morgan. And Damp Morgan was... I mean, he had sweat. I guess it was sweat coming out of him or something. You know, like Mother Nature had kind of like, like right before he was born, he'd kind of, you know, his mother had swished him around in, in, in her womb a little bit before she let him out in the world. And he had extra kind of glistening on him all the time, extra sweat, you know. 
And Morgan was a good wrestler, bro. Damn Morgan, because you couldn't wrestle him. He'd slide out of anything. He'd slide out of this. You know, you put him, he could barely, you know, he sits down in a chair, he ends up on the floor. You couldn't tackle him. You could, nothing would hold him, you know? You have him as a sleepover. He's starting the bed. He'd wake up on the floor. He's fall asleep upstairs, wake up downstairs. He's just that slipper. He's just, you know, he was slick. You know, he, he, he was a slick boy. And I think Mother Nature just had kind of, you know, it's like he had his own. He, like he was still gestating a little bit. He wasn't f- oh, fully developed. You ever go to the car wash and you get all the different settings and that last setting, sometimes you don't know when it's done, when your car is dry or it might still be slick, but you got to go. And you go off and you you riding around with, you know, soapy everything and slicked up. And that was like uh, Morgan. He was always slick. You pat him on the back and your hand would slide right off of him. And he would, uh, and Damp Morgan would go trick-or-treating with us. And people always gave him extra candy because he looked a little wet. And there's something that happens to you when you see somebody and they kind of glistening a little bit. It makes you want to show up for them. It makes you want to show up for them a little more. And then after a while, they put cinnamon on them or they put a little bit of powder or something on them to kind of so we could get a little more grip. You know, I remember in fourth grade, they put powder on his back every day. So if he sat down or something, it could hold, you know, he could hold the line and not lose, you know. Just end up on the ground. And he was just about the damn slickest kid. I wonder whatever happened to him. I know he dried up and eventually went on to, you know, to college. But I got to check in with uh, some of his family. Because he was just a unique bird. You know, he was, I think his nerves were a little, he had, his nerves were just frenetic. And he was a little bit leaky. But Mother Nature does that. And he would come trick-or-treating with us and he got all the candy, bro. When you have fucking damp Morgan with you out there. People give you everything. People give you money, bro, hugs, prayers, amulets, all type of things. Amulets, you know, pictures of fucking, di- you know, people would draw a picture of a diamond or something and give it to you. Because if they didn't have a real diamond or anything to give you, just give you fucking cheap artwork of nice shit, though. So, different time, man. Mother Nature has different plans for us sometimes. And she made something special out of him. What else is going on? I'll tell you this. In Charlotte, these people came out in support, and I'm happy they did. Charlotte Counseling and Wellness. If you're looking to find a therapist, and it can be difficult, it doesn't have to be. At Charlotte Counseling and Wellness, our counselors have dedicated their lives to help you to go from stuck to thriving and to become the person you have always imagined. Available for in-person counseling and therapy in Charlotte. Go to www.charlottecounselingandwellness.com slash Theo to get started today. That's www.charlottecounselingandwellness.com slash Theo. And the owner of that business, John, came out to the shows in Charlotte. And John, it was nice to meet you. It was nice to put a, uh, a face with the wellness. Thank you very much. Another ad I'm going to tell you about. Oh, I'm coming to Buffalo. I'm coming to Buffalo in a few weeks. Are you guys coming out or not? Because I don't think the tickets have been selling. And that's November 1st through 3rd, Buffalo, New York. We just added a second show in Salt Lake City, November 9th and 10th. It's going to be on, I think, Sunday or Thursday. Um, uh, That's it. And we added a Comedy Loft show in D.C. uh, that Sunday night as well. Oh, this is interesting. So Skillshare. Uh, they're a company we do ads for, and we're grateful to them. But I have I have the most popular classes that our listeners have chosen uh, on their site. So I'm going to go through those in just a second. Skillshare is an online learning platform with over 20,000 classes in business, design, technology, and more. And more. You can take classes in social media marketing, data science, mobile photography, or creative writing. You name it, they got it. Just you, you can get two months of Skillshare for just 99 cents. That's right, Skillshare is offering this past weekend listeners two months of unlimited access. Unlimited access. This is the porn hub of making yourself better. Skillshare.com slash Theo. Again, go to Skillshare.com slash Theo to start your two months now. That's Skillshare.com slash Theo. Here are the top 10 classes this past weekend listeners have signed up for. 
Facebook ads for e-commerce, the complete guide. That's a good one. Trap music production, drums, bass lines, and melodies. Hell yeah. And when y'all get some of them trap beats, them trappy appies, send them to daddy. We'll see if we can't throw some of them into the, into the program. Um, that just blew my mind, though, to think that uh, the people that are coming out that are listening are also le- uh, learning how to make trap music. Presentation uh, essentials. Lebanese, learning Lebanese. Unbelievable. Sketch for beginners and designing your own app. So uh, app designing. Mixing music with Young Guru. Uh, making Android apps. And get it made, get it sold. The basics of sourcing and sales for entrepreneurs. But man, it makes me feel good to know that our listeners are, uh, are thinking about just new lessons to learn to better themselves. Dude, it, I believe that we are in a huge time right now of bettering ourselves. It is, you know, we have too much knowledge now to not be trying to operate at a higher potential or to meet our potential halfway. Well, you got to meet it halfway. You owe it to yourself. I think you do. Man, I'm, I know I'm getting appreciated. I'm hungry. When I get hungry, I get kind of in desperation. I'm also kind of exhausted. So, oh, but. You know, I'm happy to be alive, and, um, you know, I just decided I'm going to go home for Halloween. I get to see my nephews, man. That's going to boost me up. I just think about those boys smiling and laughing, even if they're assholes to me half the time when I see them. They're just kids. Kids can do that, you know, uh, but I'm excited to see them and just just feel some of the joy that life has to offer, and a lot of that joy comes from other people and interacting with others. Uh, Let's get to some questions, man. We had a lot of great questions that came in. Um, Here we go. We had a a response question that came in. Uh, A couple weeks ago, we had a certified welder, Alvarez, who refused to clean up shit or doo-doo. You know, and I should have said doo-doo. I'm sorry. But uh, we had a a call that came in for him that was a a suggestion. Uh, Here we go. Hey, Theo. I'm calling a... For Alvarez that called recently, man, I think you you did the right thing by not picking up that shit from that toilet. I'm a fucking certified welder too, and the fuck if I'd stick my hand in a fucking toilet. You- and that's true, man. I'll tell you this. If somebody, I mean, that's bobbing for used apples. You know what I'm saying? That's, a, that's bobbing for already digested apples. If somebody's asking you to reach in a toilet and get a, uh, you know, to get a doo-doo out. I mean, that kind of stuff, you know, I mean, I, look, I, look, I, you're talking to a guy who used to bury somebody's doo-doos, you know, and my friend, rest in peace, Mario, but I used to bury his doo-doos when we were young, and people know about this, you know, I don't keep this kind of stuff in my, in a closet, you know, in the stool, in the stool closet, but, you know, the dude used to, in order to let me hang out with him, he made me bury his doo-doos in the yard. And he was Italian. He was like 2,000% Italian. You know, we'd stand there and make hand gestures while I was burying him. And, and so, yeah, you know, I, you know, this kind of situation, I guess, has a special place in my heart because I've had experience around, you know, OPDDs. But, uh, but anyway, let's take this suggestion. Here we go. You know your self-worth. Yeah, fucking maintenance, man, with certifications and an AC. Fuck, man. There's work for you anywhere. In that big-ass state of California, there's work anywhere. Man, I'm 110% behind your your decision. You stood up for what was right. You know your self-worth, and you know that you ain't worth picking up shit from a toilet. Tell that man to go fuck himself to go pick up that fucking shit himself. It's probably him that did it. All right, well, Theo... Great podcast, man. Love listening listening to it. Gets me through the day. Stay up, player. Gang, gang. Gang, gang, gang daddy. And looking out, and I respect that. And, you know, and, um, and look, that's a coworker. That's a cohort right there that knows your worth. And hearing you stand up for your own self worth, man. And, uh, and you know what? He, he just convinced me of, of, of yeah, he's right. You got to stand up for your own self worth. You know, you really, really do. And especially, look, if somebody, I, 
I'd rather have somebody doo-doo right into my hand than go get it out of a toilet. Because then it's like, it's like you're not even, it's like, oh, you couldn't even, you know, it's like I'm not even worth enough for you to just shit in my hand. I got to go get it out the toilet. You know what I'm saying? It's like, but yeah, way to stand up for yourself. And, and, and you know, I guess I was, you know, I was like, do you have another job? Those are some of my thoughts. But I think this man is right. You stand up for your self-worth. I've never met anybody who stood up for their self-worth whose life didn't continue to get better. Never. Never. Dude, when you, when you do the right thing, life gets better. When you t- even if it's hard, you know, you stay in that line, life gets better, man. Um, and we're going to reach out to that guy and see how things have been going with him, Alvarez, but we appreciate a coworker of his, somebody that, uh, you know, has experience in that field and, um, to, to offer him advice and suggestion there, man, uh, it is man, self-worth. It's not, it's not fair. And that dude shouldn't have made me bury his duties when I was growing up because it made me feel all kind of weird. And then after that, I'd be in the bathroom when I was young. Cause the next thing you know, I'm in elementary school and I'm the dude milling around, you know, listening to the toilets flush, hoping to make a new friend in the bathroom. You know, I got everything all jumbled in me. But uh, let's take some other calls, man. The hotline, as always, is 985-664-9503. And let's get to some calls. Thank you so much for using the hotline. The hotline is a place where you can call uh, if you're struggling with something, if you uh, have input about the show, um, you know, if you are whatever, smoking menthols, whatever, whatever you're doing, if it's something you want to share or input you have, you're welcome to give it. There are questions you can ask. You're welcome to put them there. And uh, and what else? Oh, something I was going to say. Oh, we get a lot of calls. You know, and sometimes people call, you know, and you, you want to be on, and we're trying. It's like it's hard. It's really hard. It's hard to go through them all, and it's hard to, you know, figure it out and get them on the show. It doesn't mean we're not grateful that you call. If you do call and it didn't get on, that's okay. It just didn't fit this time. Or we just couldn't do it. Sometimes we'll have, you know, we get at least 200 calls a week. Um, And some of those are anywhere from one to three minutes. Uh, So when you think about that, say that they're a minute, say they're 90 seconds each. That's 1,800 minutes of phone calls. I think, I don't know. I can't even do math that good. But uh, we're grateful but just understand if you can. All right, let's hit it. Let's hit this one. Hey, Theo, it's uh, Kylie from Oklahoma. Hey, Kylie from Oklahoma. I don't know if you guys won that shootout in Texas this past weekend, that Red River rivalry. But if you did or didn't, uh, I hope it went okay for you no matter what, onwards. And you said if you had any thoughts about it, about your opinion on, like, if sex is over, you know, broadcasted or whatever, and I wanted to say that, yeah, I do think it's true. I mean, I'm young. I'm I'm 18. So, you know, I really have been involved with technology really hands-on, you know, just because of how young I am. And there is, like, I I know people who literally have made money, like girls, like friends, who have made money, you know, selling a new photo of themselves, like, Right, so she's saying, is sex too, is it too much sex um, with technology? Uh, and she's 18, calling in from Oklahoma. Thank you, onward. And it's like a lot of what guys focus on. Like, that's like, you think a guy wants to, you know, have a conversation with you, but no, he just wants some news. So, I don't know. Just as a young person's perspective, I do think it's gotten way different than how it used to be. Well, and you probably, and you know, I'm not judging, I'm just, uh, and this isn't, I don't even, judgment isn't the word, but uh, thank you for calling. Thank you for calling. Yeah, and it used to be, man, you had to use your imagination. I mean, I had to imagine a tit. I remember we go out, they had this tree, and somebody had chiseled some nice tits into it. You know, we go out there, bro, and hopefully you go out there, and hopefully nobody else was out there. And you could pleasure yourself by it. But I mean, if you went out there, sometimes some dude's out there, somebody's parked in their truck right by it, and you're like, fuck, man. Somebody's already using that thing. And that was something beautiful, man. I mean, somebody, I don't know who had done it. 
You know, Nostradamus, Michelangelo, Geppetto, I don't know. But somebody had come and chiseled some of the most beautiful wooden ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-
this is why I feel bad about it too. Because then, women, you don't get the men that you deserve. You get men that are used to seeing sex like in, you know, I mean, it's like the, some of these porno videos, the thing is, it starts off, it's a woman hitchhiking, right? Or a damsel in distress or just a lady. Maybe even just sitting by a, by a, um, you know, sitting by a river. And then within nine minutes, they're doing, you know, dirty sex or, you know, bo or booty sex or everything. Nine minutes. So, of course, yeah, it's like if you meet a girl, a guy these days, he has, you know, his his brain has been put under a dirty spell by pornography to think that, well, within, you know, 17 minutes, somebody better have, you know, it, I better be in a dank threesome. And it's just really bad training. And I feel bad for women because you bear the brunt of it in some ways that you don't get men that, you know, uh, you're just, you're getting a weakened, diluted, uncertain form of men sometimes. Not all the time. I'm not putting men down. You know, men are great creatures. Uh, but, but the pornography uh, weakens the, the level of connection that we can bring to you. And it dirties it. And I think that that's a huge problem because it, it really, it gnaws away at a lot of the vitamins and a lot of the virility that exists in love. It kind of squeezes that stuff out of it. Porn does. It chokes some, a lot of that stuff out of, um, out of the love that we bring to the table sometimes. So just be careful. Be careful of the dark arts. All right, let's get to some more calls that came in. The hotline, as always, is 985-664-9503. What else did I want to tell you guys? Here we go. Theo, my name's David. I'm 50 fucking two years old. What's up, David? Boy, 52, son. You halfway to 104, daddy, so... You that halfway killer, bruh. Onward. I've been listening to you for a while. I like the shit that you're doing, but uh, here's the gig. I was three-sport letterman in high school. Good-looking guy. Had all the girls I ever wanted. Grew up in a place that was pretty much heaven, man. I grew up on the beach of Lake Michigan. Ooh. That sounds nice. One thing I've always wished that I would have done so far in my life that I haven't done is spent a summer in Michigan. You know, I have a cousin, his name is James Benham, and um, and he's a really great man. He's a family man, and uh, and he spends his summers up there. His wife's from up there, and I always wish that I would be able to go up there. One day I will, but uh, onward. 26 years old, got out of college, moved to Chicago, met a girl, got married on Catalina Island in California after I lived out there for a while. Oh, yeah, that's a nice place out there, and they have buffalo out there. Somebody brought two buffalo out there to like a Christmas party or something and got fucked up or whatever and left them out there. And the buffalo started doing sex because that's nature, boy. And uh, and they made, and now there's tons of buffalo out there on, on an island. Onward. Went back to uh, Chicagoland area. A friend of mine pushed me off of a boat dock at my wedding reception. Paralyzed, 26. Been in a wheelchair for fucking a little over half my life. Wow. That took a wild turn, man. I'm um, sorry to hear that, man. Um, yeah, a little over half your life you've been in a wheelchair. Onward. I kind of get mad that uh, the people fucking cry out and say, I can't do this, can't do that. I look at fucking people who eat themselves in the fucking wheelchairs. They're so fucking fat and lazy that they fucking eat themselves into a wheelchair when I would give fucking anything to be able to walk, be able to do the shit that I used to do. I'm also adamant that people nowadays expect so freaking much from everybody else. People fucking look to the government. People look to the rich. People look to the hard workers to say, give me something. Nothing fucking is free in this world. 
Here you go. Nothing is free. Not even the guarantee that you will have, uh, you know, use of your limbs, that you'll have uh, tomorrow, that you'll have, um, you know, the second half of the breath you're taking right now. Nothing. It's not guaranteed. You know, and that's an interesting story, David. I appreciate you sharing it with us. You know, I really appreciate you sharing it with us. Um, and you're right, man. Look, I agree. <clears throat> There's a lot of handout culture out there. There's a lot of gimme culture. <clears throat> There's a lot of lazy times. There's a lot of people that have just, you know, you know, people sitting at home not doing anything for years. And then finally they start advertising diseases on television that you get from sitting at home watching TV. And suddenly everybody thinks that they have one. There's a lot of la uh, lack. There's a lot of lacking out there. A lot of people that don't have desire that, you know, um, I think also it is, there's a lot of side effects of comfort in America. Like we start, like you get to a point where, you know, you have so many, you know, you have air conditioning, you have water, you have everybody's get, you know, everybody has, and it get, we get too comfortable. You know, there's a lot of that. I mean, I appreciate your point of view. Um, yeah, there's a lot of people and it makes me wonder, well, yeah, why, where is the desires that are inside of us? Why are they so weakened these days? Why? You know, like when I think about the fact that men used to go, would go to war and the, when you think about what people went through in Vietnam, we couldn't go through an hour of that today. The average man. And they used to draft. That meant everybody had to go. Except for rich people and handicapped people. Everybody else had to go fight. And I don't mean all rich people. But you know what I'm saying, man. Them Dodgers, bruh. The Los Angeles Dodgers. And could you imagine that? They show up and half the people that you're... If half the people that work even in the building where our studio is had to go... Dude, some of these guys have so much asthma, some of these weak, uh, just worms. LA has so many wormy people. Half these dudes can't even digest a fucking banana without having to take a couple of supplements. And they're going to go fight. They couldn't do it. But a lot of us couldn't do it. I, You know, it's interesting. I think, you know, and I can only fathom what, you know, what your life has been like. And, you know, probably a lot of anger, I would imagine, builds up. God, man, I really can't imagine that to go from, I mean, you sounded angry, you know, you sounded like a lot of this makes you angry, you know, and I wish there was a way you could find some more peace for that, you know, I don't know, I, I don't, I mean, fuck, I get angry and I have my, you know, most, most, most of my faculties and I wasn't a three-star athlete, I wasn't even a damn one-star guy when I worked at that pizza place, I was maybe a two-star Bus boy. Actually, I was about a three star bus boy when I worked at this at countless bus boy restaurants. I was a two star dishwasher. Mm. I was four star when it came to stealing a bike out of my neighborhood to ride across town and get a little bit of wow, you feel me? Uh, but man, um. Yeah, it's just such a wild story, man. It makes me kind of, doesn't. I mean, it makes me sad. It makes me, you know, I feel bad that that happened to you. I wish your friend wouldn't have done that. You know, and he didn't know. Um, Somebody pushed some kid off in our high school. Everybody's on a boat and his own brother pushed him off the front of the boat. And you could hear the, the propeller hit him as the boat went over him. And thank God it just cut his leg or something. This boy, neck a T, he didn't have a neck. And he still had, but then that had nothing to do with him. He didn't have a neck before they pushed him in. But uh, but yeah, I can imagine that you see like man, that you have that desire, you know, and you do, and you see it lacking in others. But it's like, how do we get that back? How do we reignite the men? I know we do. We don't do it by beating them all down and making them second guess every move that they make in the world. You know, I do think it's it's good to bring a lot of things to awareness. 
Um, you know, I'm glad that there's some awareness about sexual assault and that sort of thing going on these days. I'm glad that people aren't thinking of women as uh, second class citizens. But I don't like us thinking of men as um, as creeps and perverts and, you know, denouncing even their own existence. That's not safe. That's not a safe way to do it. But I appreciate your call, man, and I appreciate your interest in, uh, in supporting this past weekend. And yeah, look, I mean, I think that's a tough love way to go about it. But yeah, why are people struggling? Why are people, you know, how have, what is wrong with men today? Why are we struggling with some stuff? You know, is it, and I think Mother Nature is going to right the ship soon. I think about this a lot. Like, you know, all this mental health and all these things, is this the way that we're supposed to exist as humans? Or will Mother Nature start to feel that what's going on and something's going to occur? That's going to reignite the, the legs and the arms and, the, and reconnect the spines inside of all of us men. And not just you, my brother. But, but yeah, it's like, how do we, but in the meantime, we have to work with where we are. And I, you know, I, does that man that's sitting there on his couch or that lady that's doing, you know, having 60 snickerdoodles in the afternoon and nine episodes of uh, Judge Judy, does she want to be doing that? It's sad when it's a hand me out people. Yeah. I do. It's like how you got to ignite people's families, or how do you get that seed in them to want to succeed? I don't know. I don't know. I wish I knew more so I knew what the effects were. You know, I even thinking about it and doing some stuff like we, you know, we want to start this, you know, like we did this game show the other day where we were helping a cleaning lady get some extra cash. And I thought for my second, well, what if, you know, what if they do, what if somebody uses money and they go do something bad? There's nothing I can do about that part. All I can do is just the front part. Try to help. See what they do. You know? You know, I don't know. It's interesting, man. Thank you for calling. Thank you for helping me thinking about it, man. And I wish, you know, I wish I had a way to lift some of that anger off of you. But I can't I can't tell you that I wouldn't be the same way, man. You know? I mean, I'm judgmental as it is, and and I get angry too. So, but I wish you didn't feel that angry, you know? I wish you felt, you know, I wish you felt better. I mean, look, man, you're still a three-star athlete to me, dude. Shit. I was a two-star bus boy. Actually, I was, I was a three-star bus boy. Uh, onward, let's take another call. Hey, Theo, my name is Patricio. Um, I'm from Minneapolis. Obviously, you're a very creative individual. Uh, whether you think that or not, uh, you know, you got that wit, wit. Oh, thanks, man. I appreciate it. Well, when I was young, you know, I didn't have a way to really defend myself or anything, and so I had to use words. You know, words were, they were free. And, you know, I think of my, uh, it was one thing, like other people had uh, stuff, like things or, you know, family, you know, things. They had family or things or, you know, you know, uh, popcorn or stuff like that, or breakfast at the house with the, you know, they had things that I wanted, but I didn't have those. So I had to have something that was free that I could use. And so I, I guess my brain told, uh, chose words, uh, onward. Funny guy. Thanks bro. I appreciate it. Just wondering how like you keep creative juices flowing and where you get your inspiration from on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, and if you're ever feeling, you know, creatively dry. Um, yeah, so that's my question. Uh, Thank you so much. That's a good question. And I have, actually. I have a lot. I, I definitely suffered from it this summer, feeling kind of warped um, and just feeling tired. You know, the feeling tired, uh, feeling warped, feeling exhausted of, uh, of creativity. And so thinking of ways to kind of replenish that. You know, I notice if I stay away from like, uh, you know, people know I battle, you know, smoke some ci uh, cigarettes, you know, sometimes. And that's them little small, you know, them small, the little devil's DX. And um, and if I don't smoke a lot of those, then I find that my creativity is better. Uh, if I stay active, I find that my creativity is better. Um, 
And But yeah, I do feel dry a lot of times. And the hard part is I just feel tired. My brain feels tired. Like it's just been run a lot. Like it needs a tune up. It's like it's hard to get in touch sometimes um, with my feelings because uh, I've just been busy. It's hard for my feelings to get some rest. So I'm going to find some new ways to do that coming up. And I think as things get more efficient, then I'll be able to do that as well. But uh, thanks for you guys' patience as listeners. You know, I fear a lot of times that I'm going to lose listeners, um, you know, or lose our group that we've created. So I guess some of it is fear, too. You know, I start to get scared, and then it's hard to be creative when you're in a place of fear sometimes, Um, which is one thing I miss about being a child when you were a child. I mean, creativity saved you so many times, even if you were scared. Uh, You know, like you could be in a bad situation, but you could think that, you know, you could take yourself out of it with your imagination. Um, Let's take another call. Onward. Hi, Theo. It's Molly Martin from New Albany, Indiana. Hey, Molly. Thank you for calling from Indiana. Spanish for Indian. Onward. I met you when you were in Nashville a few weeks ago. But I was just listening to the uh, episode from Monday, and you were talking about going to therapy. And first of all, I want to thank you for being so open about going to therapy. I think there's a lot of stigma around that, especially for men. And I think it's really awesome that you talk about it that way and maybe um, some of your listeners will feel more comfortable going to therapy uh, because of your example. Um, but my question is, you said that you have two therapists, and I'm super curious um, why you have two therapists. Like, is one therapist for certain things and the other for other things? Or, I don't know, I'm just, like, super curious what that's all about. Thank you, Ms. Martin, for calling in. Uh, that's a good question. I go to one therapist. Um, it's just been just like a therapist, a mental health therapist that I've gone to. And then I go to one for like kind of like emotional addiction kind of stuff. Um, You know, I struggle with, uh, you know, it's like a center that's specifically for that sort of thing. And I've struggled with um, being able to emotionally connect, you know, uh, with others. So... Um, you know, and so I like to try and focus on that kind of stuff. Um, you know, because it's, uh, you know, it's crazy that you can exist and some of the best parts of life, you won't get them because you're not calibrated correctly. And I just, you know, I want to get all the feels out of this out of this deal. You know, I've done, you know, I've gotten to do, you know, like I've gotten a lot of the, you know, I've had gotten like a lot of the fun stuff and done the, you know, and I've searched for the feels in other places. You know, I've done steroids and, uh, you know, you know, my buddy, you know, and he was homoerotic and we used to, you know, park on the side of the interstate. We were both bus boys and I was a four star bus boy, son. Um, and we, you know, he's one of my best friends and he died. He drove into an embankment on pills out there, but he, uh, and we were just friends, but he, we used to do steroids and go to the gym. You know, I tried to, you know, let me get big to feel good. Let me, um, you know, I tried doing the cocaine and, you know, meeting, you know, meeting strange women off of the world and, you know, looking at wild women's buttholes and all of that and doing that kind of deal and thinking about the dirty, 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 dirty. And so, I don't know, I'm just still on this search where I want to figure out what's 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 possibly inside of me and what's, you know, I'm out here, I'm fucking speed lunking inside of myself, you know? And I know that, uh, you know, I know that I have a ability to, um, to tell a story or to orate or to speak. We all have different abilities. You know, God gives us different things or our higher power gives us different things. Someone could be a dancer. Someone could be a speaker, you know. Uh, and I want to, and, and if I can help communicate ways to emotionally learn about oneself to others, um, then... 
you know, I, I just want to give my gift of being able to communicate as much ammunition as it can. So, you know, that's why I go to two therapists, I guess, because I'm just curious about it. You know, it's like I'm a coal miner and I'm fucking pickaxing away at the inside of me. Uh, so I guess that's some of it. I don't know. That's a good question. I'm a little bit tired right now. Um, but let me take another caller and thank you for calling, young lady, and thanks uh, for your interest. What up, Theo? My name's Connor. I'm from Oklahoma. I was just watching this most recent episode of this past weekend, and you got on the subject of a blind guy or a blind person and what their experience is like. Yeah, we were trying to have a blind person on the show so we can learn more about what that's like. You know, because we're out here battling the dark arts, and they're, they're, shoot, they're battling the dark. So I'd love to know more about it. Onward. And I'm sure it's different for every blind person, but... uh I actually got to sit and talk with a guy about this subject who was blind. Uh, I was hiking the Appalachian Trail, and I met him in Damascus, Virginia, at a festival called Trail Days. His name was Quest. And uh, we were dabbling in some dark arts, getting into some fungi. Oh, you're on the mushrooms. You eat mushrooms with a blind dude? Hell yeah, boy. That's like the Legend of Zelda right here. More? And uh, I asked him, I was like, man, what's it like getting into these psychedelics? as a blind person, and uh, he told me that... Fuck, I'd love to know what it's like even getting into a sack of Doritos as a blind person. I wonder if that cheesy dust hits your tongue the same way. If you can't see it, do you feel like you just just tasting a damn triangle of the Lord? Onward. For him, blindness is not darkness. He constantly sees, like, these fields of color and geometry... And so it's already kind of psychedelic as it is without any of that external stimuli. But uh, I just thought that was a kind of cool, uh, kind of cool, and I wanted to share my experience with you. Anyways, gang, gang, much love from Oklahoma. Gang, gang, much love back at you. That's that boomerang, gang, gang, bro. You threw it out at me, and I fucking touched that thing and spun it around back at you. Um, boomerang, gang. I'll tell you this, man. I can't imagine being blind and on mushrooms, dude. Just out there hitchhiking through the Lord's asshole like that. Come on. Can you imagine? Wow, just hitting warp zone after warp zone. Dude. That's fascinating. That's fascinating. To be blind and on mushrooms. Wow, that's brave, dude. I've done some brave stuff, you know, but I've never done anything like that. I mean, that is just, man. Dude, I one time put my, sometimes if you pull your nuts up over your wiener, right? I don't know why, I'm such a kid. But it looks like a baby's head is coming out of the middle of your body. And sometimes I would do that. You know, and run into like a party room or something and show it to everybody. And everybody would like, you know, have fun and cheers. And like, yeah, look at it. It's a girl. Uh, but I've never been blind. Uh, I've never, but I've never been brave enough to eat uh, mushrooms and be blind at the same time. So kudos to you guys, man. You and Quest, dude, out there on a mission. All right, let's take one more call, man. I'm going to shut it down and go home. I love you guys. Uh, hit the hotline, as always, 985-664-9503. I'm coming up. I'll be in Appleton, Wisconsin, Phoenix, Buffalo, Salt Lake City, Addison, Texas, Washington, D.C., and Lexington, Kentucky. Uh, onward. Hi, Theo. My name is Courtney from Seattle. My fiancé and I are totally in love. We are each other's best friends. Everything is awesome between him and I, but the only problem is we have very different sex drives. I have a very high sex drive. Oh, okay. You got that Andretti. You got that Andretti in your, uh, in, in your Vegetti onward. And his is very low. Okay. So he got that bumper to bumper. In his thumper, onward. And my question for you is, and and maybe some of the female callers could answer it, what do you do if you're a woman and the person that you're with has a low sex drive? I love him. 
Um, we have a child together, and I've worked really hard to, you know, get back in shape and spice things up, and um, I've been doing a really good job on my end, and it's like he just doesn't think about it. It's not something that is really important to him. I, I don't want to break up with him. I love him to pieces, but I'm just – every guy that I've been with, that's never been an issue. So uh, thanks so much. Okay, and that's never been an issue. But those guys also, that was a previous time. That was a time when you were younger, you know? Now you've been with this man. Y'all have a child together. There's a lot more experience. There's a lot has occurred. You know, when you're younger, you yeah, I can't compare the girl I was with when we was 16 out there. You know, when we was out there by the riverside out there, you know, filling each other's mouth with wildflowers and doing, you know, doing, you know, heavy oral and everything putting sand in our mouths and, you know, licking each other's crotch areas and everything. Just wa- let feeling people, just each feeling each other unravel, you know, with that gravel. That was different times. You can't, now it's crazy. It's old. You're, it's different. There's a couple things you can see if he's interested in other people. Give him a get out of jail free card. And you might think, well, that's crazy. But it, here, here's my thoughts on some of that. Is it crazy if sometimes it can spark things up? You know, you get out there and if you've been having rye, you know, you've been having rye for so long, let him get out there and catch a couple, you know, a little hit of pumpernickel. You know, let him catch a little bit of that, uh, that mazel ball or something different. You know, it's like maybe he could use that, maybe that. And I know that's a brave option, but here's what you're doing by that. You're not saying this might sound crazy to some women, but I don't think it is. We live in a time where sex is like it's become in a good way. It's become more. I think it's become like I don't think it's about as much like save your virginity for, you know, like till marriage. I don't think it's as much that as much these days as it is like. Well, let's don't think about sex as the big connector. Let's think of it as important for sure, but let's think about emotionally what's keeping us together. Let's think about understanding. You know, because the se- we're, we're a little bit warped as a species right now with sex. I mean, the girl called in earlier about it. So you got you to meet the situation where we have to meet it where we're at. He might be shocked if you said, hey, what if I, you know, Get you a little bit of a, you know, buy you a party starter one night. You know, it doesn't mean you don't love him. It doesn't mean he doesn't love you. You just sometimes you got to put a little bit of uh, paprika in your sneaker. You know, if you've been jogging on fucking, uh, if you've just been jogging on ginger, sometimes your feet ain't feeling the spice. And so you got to put a little paprika in the sneaker. And, and then suddenly you out there, you're like, been like dancing. You know, suddenly you out there, you freaking Carl, you know, Carl Luganis, bro. You're running the 700. That's the thing. Sometimes you got to get that variety is the spice of life. And so maybe throw your, throw your, throw your, throw your man a little spice header. Doesn't mean you don't love him or he doesn't love you. You might just have to change it up. You know, and then he'll come back and he'll be like, oh, wow. Then, then you're the new thing. So that's one option. Another option is, I mean, I don't know. It sounds like you guys are communicating about it, so there's not a communication issue. And I don't know what another. I mean, that's one option. Yeah, I mean, and you could, you could as well. You could offer to do that. You could offer. And at first, he might be like, no, even though he wants to really talk about it and consider it. You know, about it, you know, experimenting with others. You know, you could talk about maybe doing something real naughty that you're not used to doing. Or, you know, sneak in another lady with you, hire a woman. They have sex workers out there who are comfortable women who run good businesses, who are clean and take care of themselves. And, you know, and they want to help situations like this. So, you know, um, I, I don't know. That could be an option, and I'm and I could be totally wrong. You know, I mean, I don't know. I struggle. I'm seeing two therapists, so 
It's double duty right now. But uh, but if you know that he loves you, then you should, guys should be able to talk about any options. And sometimes, you know, with the, as oversexed as we are and as oversexed as everything is these days, it's just about the love sometimes. You know, does it even matter sometimes where you get that kick at? Sometimes it's about the love. It's about, you know, sex has become so rampant. It's like anybody could do sex. But to know you love somebody or that somebody loves you, it's like that's the new sex. Dude, somebody that'll hold my hand and, you know, you know, squeeze a go into my mouth while we watching an episode of Dateline. That's the new sex. You know, love is the new sex, I think, sometimes. Sometimes. And I could have no idea what I'm talking about. I am almost delirious. Um, but I love you guys, man. I know that. And uh, and if and if things is a little wonky, then 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 meet the day halfway. You know, renegotiate how your day is going. Anything can change. You know, we got to be malleable. You know, if some, you know, it's okay. Sometimes you gotta you gotta be malleable. But. I, uh, I'm going to step out, guys. I appreciate it. Thank you, everybody in Charlotte that came out. Um, we are still excited about the King and the Sting. We are still, uh, we are still, it's still going to happen. It's just the wheels are going to move a little bit slower, but it's going to give us more time to prepare it. Um, but you guys be good, man. Stay awake. Take care of yourself. Take care of someone else. There's no better way to take care of yourself than by taking care of someone else. If you don't feel love, go love somebody. Then they feel it, and guess what? Bam. You'll feel it too, man, because you just made it inside of yourself. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I'm delirious. I am out of here. Tiny Sand, who again leading us out of here with that back in black hitter. Good to yourself, man, and woman, you probably deserve it.